Most of India's 500,000 villages have no access to telephones or banks. Villagers have to trudge miles to make a telephone call or check their bank account. This market is by no means easy to break into, but the effort could be far outweighed by the massive opportunity. The rural market has tremendous inefficiencies. Poor people tend to pay high prices for you know, consumer packaged goods, for food, whatever it is that they're purchasing, the markets are inefficient so they end up paying very high prices. Any good business will look at that as an opportunity because you can bring in your efficiency and for the poor, make sure they get lower cost goods and obviously capture market share. SKS Microfinance is introducing mobile banking to its one and a half million customers. It is tied up with mobile phone manufacturers to offer villagers low cost handsets and mainstream banks looking for an inroad to rural customers. The ability to carry out financial transactions by mobile phones is a hit, especially amongst rural women who have till now not known the luxuries of bank accounts or telephones. Mobile banking is nothing more than a, a debit card that is on your mobile device. So it's exactly everything that we do with a debit card. We make purchases, we can you know, make deposits, uh, we can send people money person to person. Everything that you do with a debit card or a ATM card, or a check for that matter, basically you're doing that with a mobile device. Villagers can deposit and withdraw money from their bank accounts through the village grocer. Amina Begum uses her mobile phone to pay 25 cents for vegetables. Before, she had to walk 18 kilometers to the nearest bank. Now, she doesn't visit the bank at all. Earlier, it took me a whole day to go to the bank. Now I can continue working and do everything with my cell phone, withdraw small amounts of cash, buy groceries and talk to people. This helps me a great deal. In another part of rural India, 50-year-old Balaya is hard at work clearing a dry lake. He earns around two and a half dollars a day under a national government work scheme for poor families. To ensure the money reaches illiterate workers like Balaya, the government has issued them with biometric smart cards. The customer is given a smart card which carries the details of all the product that he has with the institution, whether it's a saving account or a loan or insurance, whatever he has. The entitlement that he has or the product he has is carried on the card. The card also carries the fingerprints of the customer. That's to make sure that the right customer is availing of the product. That suits Balaya just fine. He doesn't have to make the trek to town. He just collects his cash from a local agent with a handheld ATM device. Earlier, I never came to work because I didn't believe I would be paid. But after I got this card, I get paid on time. So I come to work regularly. Fino provides smart cards under the government scheme and also works with banks and insurers to offer their products on the same platform. It earns a small fee per transaction and hopes to break even this year. The one million that we have done is just scratching the surface. Uh, even the three to four million that we are targeting in the current year, that's again a very small number compared to the overall market that you see. Marketing strategies may not always work the first time. But India's rural market is the market of the future and companies that want to be a part of the success story know they have to enter this market early. If the products take off, sheer economy of scale should ensure that profits do too.